Hey guys, and welcome back to more Titan Tries. Well, it's been a hot minute, hasn't it? So, uh, I've thought about bringing this back for quite a while. However, I haven't had time to do it. But uh, now we're pre-scheduling and getting quite far ahead in the schedule. Um, I decided to maybe, as long as I have time, I want to try and upload a Titan Tries every weekend. Uh, this time, we're going to be focusing on air combat. Yes. Now, this is a blast from my childhood, I can assure you. This was one of probably my most played PlayStation 1 games. Good old air combat. In Japan, of course, it was called Ace Combat, and the rest of the uh, series did get renamed um, Ace Combat as well, going forwards everywhere else. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Ace Combat series. I've basically played all of them i think apart from a few um i haven't played the latest one either uh interesting series so this is where it all started it's very very basic uh going back to this surprisingly so what's quite interesting when you go to uh, ace combat 2 um, it is monumentally overhauled compared to this one. So, Titan tries, trying to get it back. Uh, sort of changing the formula up a little bit. Uh, by... We're going to have a bit of a blurb and a chat on the title screen. And then I'm just going to shut up and we're going to play maybe a level or two. I want to try and keep these videos at absolute most an hour <laughs> i'm saying an hour because that gives me wiggle room with uh other games that you can't really play for a quick 10 minutes so um as i said want to try and do these for the weekend and i, I want these videos to kind of help people if if you're just looking for um you know some footage of a game uh something that you're trying to remember from memory something like that you know maybe a forgotten classic that from your childhood you don't want to watch an entire commentated let's play just to see some footage so this is kind of for people just scrolling through youtube or for people that just want to see some basic footage now i actually fired this game up yesterday uh, I'm on holiday now but my brother's going to come and stay and visit with me so I'm not actually going to have any time to do any recording this game is being recorded for the channel by the way um, I fired it up yesterday and I played through the game in one sitting uh, it was like slipping on an old glove you know what I mean like slipping back into a very comfy well-worn pair of trousers and I'll tell you what it's aged it's a little bit crusty but damn is it still fun um, now this game actually kind of like sold itself as like a hardcore um, action pack simulator back in the day it's not <laughs> it's not uh, it's really nothing like that um it's it's not even advanced as some of the simulators that you'd have found on the mega drive um or in anything arcadey like g lock anyone remember g lock anyone no just okay just just me okay so anyway coming from stuff like that and f22 raptor um loads of cool simulations on the mega drive to this stepping up to this was a whole nother world it was incredible so i'm going to give uh, some i've got some information here so air combat is a flight simulator game that was released for the playstation one back in 1995 by namco uh that actually surprised me i forgot that it was actually one of the first playstation uh one games and yeah yeah, it looks like it as well. Um, doesn't even have analog support. So that's interesting. The second game does, but this one is all digital, baby. So, of course, this is the first game in the Ace Combat series, which has become one of the most popular and successful franchises in the genre. That's true, but it doesn't exactly have a lot of competition. There was um, an indie release called Wingman, I believe, um way back a couple of years ago that dropped and apparently that was actually quite good so i mean the basis synopsis of the game is we are a mercenary pilot who's hired by a government we don't know what government 
um, to fight against a terrorist organization that has taken over an island nation. Because, of course, of course, that's the story. So there's 17 missions in this game, and actually they're quite short. You really can rip through this game pretty quickly. Uh, there are various objectives, as it says here, but they're basically all the same thing. Just shoot everything. There is one escort mission in this game, which... Uh, it's i mean i there's a friendly aircraft flying around but i don't know if it even gets attacked or anything it's probably the easiest escort mission uh, in existence so that's a thing um yeah so it says here this game contains various objectives such as destroying enemy formations and protecting allies or attacking m a massive airship that's true but that's the final boss and you know it's kind of interesting going back to this game again and fighting that huge massive airship at the end um because that's a common theme that they kind of latched onto a little bit in future games and man did they massively expand that so 16 different aircraft in this uh they're kind of they're mostly based on real life aircraft you've got like the f-22 raptor which interestingly enough isn't the best plane in this game i think the best jet in this game is probably the su-27 for some reason don't know why but it is uh also the a-10 warthog uh or you know lightning too depending on what you want to call it is probably one of the best planes um in this game as well I, I don't I, I don't make the rules i don't know why it's like the best dog fighter um it's got like the best stats apart from speed yeah but you know it's cool to fly around in a freaking a10 warthog blasting f-22s out of the sky what it did say simulation yeah simulation. it's not a simulation guys really not so um yeah, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. And you can hire wingman. Yes, that's true. There are wingmen in this game which we can hire and take with us in combat. And the further we get, the better the wingman we can hire. They are expensive. And regardless of what it's got written down here, guys, in my notes, the wingmen don't... They don't do anything. I don't know what they do. You, you give them like an order before you start the mission and then they come along for the ride and get a fat paycheck. I've never even seen a wingman shoot at someone. Every now and again, you get a message saying your wingman is in danger. Um, okay. I, I've never seen the wingman get shot down either. So, but, that, but there's that. There is a multiplayer component to it. There's like a two-player split-screen thing, which I've never played. I don't even think I played it back in the day, to be honest. Uh, the only thing that I can remember doing with the split-screen is firing up the mode and just flying around, just um, using it as kind of like a sandbox type thing. But that's fine. So as we know, the game was originally called Ace Combat in Japan, but was changed to Air Combat for the Northern American and European releases to avoid confusion with another flight simulator game called Air Combat 22. I don't remember Air Combat 22. Not familiar with that game at all. So the game is based off an arcade uh, game of the same name that was released in 1993. The developers decided to create a new game from scratch for the PlayStation 1 after realizing that the console's hardware was not powerful enough to properly render the arcade version's gameplay. Yeah, uh, I think this game was heavily, heavily influenced by a little film somewhere uh, that came out in the late 80s, I believe. Yes, Tom, Tom Cruise, I believe, was in it. Yeah, Top Gun, I think. Yeah, I think that influenced quite a lot of things. The game actually sold 2.23 million copies, which I was surprised. I had no idea that it did that well. Um, and was later reprinted under Sony's The Best Budget title range. Yeah, this is like a, a bit of contention for me because I've got all of the Ace Combat games on my shelf except this one. I had this one and I, for the life of me, have no idea where it went. I assume it went walkies when I moved as some of my games did i've got a feeling there's like a box of games that just didn't make it here um 
Unfortunately, I can only find, because I thought, oh, I'll buy it again. I'll add it to my collection. But I can only actually find um, the Platinum version or the Greatest Hits version. And I don't mind having that version in my collection. It's fine. But I, if I'm adding a game, I like it to be the Black Label version. So anyway, it received positive reviews from critics who praised the arcade-like gameplay, realism, and cinematic approach, but also criticised the graphics and presentation for being below average. Yeah, th that kind of makes sense, because when I played the game um, back in the day, even when the PlayStation first came out, I th I'm sure I got my PlayStation in 95. I think I got it a year after it came out, and I believe it came out in 1994. Um, if it came out in 1995, I, I must have got it in 1996. Can't remember. Something like that. Um, and even I was extremely underwhelmed. <laughs> but the gameplay and the music were excellent, so it didn't matter. So the game spawned a successful franchise with several sequels, spin-offs, and other forms of media. The latest entry in the series, Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown, which was released in 2019 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Yeah, uh, I actually have that one. Uh, I've got it on Steam, but I've never played it. So one thing I do suggest everybody does before playing this game, go into your options, put your controls for God's sakes on expert. If you play it as novice, you feel like you've been neutered. Um, you can turn left and right and you're very much locked and fixed in a, in a very stagnant position on novice. Whereas with expert mode, you can yaw and drift and you can do full barrel rolls and things, uh, which you cannot do on novice. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, I believe if I load the data, just for shits and giggles here, I do actually have a save here, I believe where we have everything unlocked because I, I literally went through and completed this game yesterday and I had a good time with it now being on an emulator technically we can speed up loading <laughs> there we go so if we go to view our aircraft you can see that I have all of the aircraft unlocked to start off with, you only have a... Oh, we could actually take the A-10 out. The A-10 is just brutal. Let's do that. We'll, we'll take the A-10 out. Um, yeah, to start off with, I think you have the F-4. And you have, like, one other plane, which is really stanky. It's not the F-18. It's not the F-16. It's not the F-15. Oh, yes, you have the F-14 and the F-4 to start with. Uh, the F-14 is actually pretty decent, as it was in real life. Um, the F-4, eh, pretty stanky. So, let's go. Mission 2, Fighter Superiority. Let's play one or two missions and see how we do. Mobilization required. Our base's position was compromised in the last enemy push. Reports indicate imminent arrival of bombers. Scramble and ace those bogeys. Target, B-52 Bomber Force. Alright. So, this is an air superiority mission, so... You know what? Air superiority, we're gonna go for the F-22 Raptor. I suppose we could have taken the Typhoon out as well. You know what? Emulation, we can speed up loading. Alright. As you can see, it's a very freaking basic looking game. We've got 10,000 rounds of ammo in our machine gun, uh, which is insane. You can run out of ammo, but you have to really try. The music in this game is absolutely superb as well, by the way. There is another view. You can go for like a third person camera sort of view, but it's rubbish in this version. Uh, it's way better in uh, the next games because you actually have a proper hard targeting systems and all that kind of stuff so the only real way to play this one is this way you get paid for completing missions that's not good 
you get paid for uh, completing missions and destroying as many enemies as you can. Money becomes a non-issue as we go through. So all of these rolls and loops and dips and things that I'm doing, you cannot do that on novice control mode. Let's go for a gun kill. Gotta be careful of these B-52s because they've got machine guns on the back. And those machine guns kind of are no joke. Ooh. There we go, he hit us. Nasty bloody things. Not sure why we're fighting B-52s. But whatever. We fight all sorts. B-52s, spirits. Uh, really is a mixed bag. They tried to add as much in here as they possibly could. As you can hear as well, the music is so so good. Oh, an AV8. <laughs> we got a Harrier. I mean, sure. We missed it, apparently. Oh, there's a tornado. Let's go for the tornado. Come on, baby. Let's get that tone. Oh, yeah. We have 65 missiles as well. But... The missiles aren't the most powerful missiles in the world. Unknown why. Let's just try and strafe this guy. There we go. He's done. He's had enough. Oh, my God. Waste that Harrier. If we hold down what would be the square... No. Yeah, the square button. We can get a large map up. Which is nice. There are stealth aircraft in this game as well. Uh, stealth aircraft don't appear on your radar. You actually have to visually spot them before they show up. Which is an interesting mechanic. Alright. What's left? More Harriers. There isn't unlimited enemies in the game. Uh, each level only has a certain amount. He's done. He's had enough. Get the fuck out of here. Now, the mission variety isn't exactly that big in this one. Unlike with uh, Ace Combat 2 and uh, the following games, the mission variety gets massively padded out. And they did some crazy stuff. They tried to add, like, weeby anime stories to the game and stuff like that with middling results. Some of the storylines were actually not too bad at all. And some of them were just complete guff. Fires of Liberation, I'm looking at you. And I believe that was Ace Combat 6? I can't remember. God, the fucking music though. The music. If you get damage, you've got to pay for it, which is fine. We are a mercenary after all. Not sure how a mercenary can afford an F-22 Raptor. I'm pretty sure last time I checked, they're about 157 million. Yeah, 157 million dollars each. So if you've got a billion dollars in your back pocket, you can afford three. Fast forward the loading. All right, let's do one more mission. Intercept. Let's go. AWAX reports an enemy incursion in our sector. Alerting <gasps> you from local air support to forward operations. Neutralize the approaching units. Target enemy attacking force. Formation makeup is unknown. Expect enemy fighter support and a tough dogfight. Good luck. A tough dog so dogfight, you say? Let's handicap ourselves if we're having a tough dogfight. Oh, the F-117 uh, Nighthawk is crap. <laughs> it's really bad. As you kind of would think it would be. You know. Considering it shouldn't have a gun. And uh, can only hold two bombs. But this isn't real life. So that's okay. You know what? Let's go with the Eurofighter. Let's take the old Typhoon. Down. 
let's go. Yeah, it's interesting, as I said, seeing the grass, uh, graphics of the second game. What an improvement. Absolutely crazy stuff. And then, and then they also had uh, Ace Combat 3 on the PlayStation 1, which was called the Electrosphere. Now, there's a lot of trivia we've got for that one, which we will get to. Ah, oh, the music. The music. Holds up so well. Here, yeah, man, we got a tornado. A tornado versus a Eurofighter. Ain't gonna end well for the tornado. Now, there was a Dreamcast arcade shooter, uh, aerial shooter, called uh, Deadly Skies. But. It, it was okay, but its biggest problem was it wasn't it wasn't Ace Combat. But that had a pretty good soundtrack from what I can remember. Maybe we'll have to dig that one out at some point. I need to go back through the uh, playlist. And find out what games I have done and what I haven't done. Oh, he's done. He's done. So another feature of this game, which I don't believe was carried over with other games in the series, was every time you buy a jet, that's essentially a life. You can only have... You can only have eight jets at a time, unless you've already completed the game, like my save here where you have everything. And if you actually get shot down, you lose a jet forever. So, permadeath for your jets. In rare instances, you can rebuy them. But that's only if there's a double of it in the shop. And there isn't a double for every airframe. Like, most notably, the A-10. There's only one of those. And I believe there's only one F-18, uh, one F-22. Some of the other mid-tier mid -tier jets there's two of. Come on, baby. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Your padlock, sunshine. Ooh. Blew straight past him. Let's cut the brakes. He should blow straight past us. There we go. So, what we can do with our tail rudder, and we can yaw, you can't do that with the novice controls either. Which makes getting gun kills so much harder. Man, this guy's got a bit of an arsehole to him. I'm trying not to let him get away. He's done. He's had enough. Oh, that music. Should we do one more? I think we should do one more. You can see kind of how short these missions are, though. Bearing in mind, like I said, there's, uh, there's only 17 missions. Right, what have we got? Night attack, night attack on a coastal city. Ooh. Up to now, our offensive missions have been constrained by the presence of civilians in Donit City. A recent evacuation of that city permits us to engage hard targets within the city perimeter. Target one, computer communication center. Target two, enemy headquarters building. Night conditions should neutralize enemy ground fire. However, the city has at least three interceptors available. We have no intelligence on false composition. From now on, you will have a wingman assigned to you. Inform him of the operation before departure. All right, I will make sure to inform him of... Uh, you know what? Let's launch with support. So who have we got here? Let's go ham with it. Let's take Sally. We'll take Sally. She's a veteran. 
It's going to cost uh, six million. Oof. Let's have Sally. And you know what? Considering it's a ground attack, let's take the A10 out as well. The A10 is brutally overpowered. Bizarrely so. The only thing with the A10 is the power isn't there. Now, it's worth noting all of the jets have the same speed for some reason. Um, but jets with less power just take longer to get there for some reason. Right. But to be honest, although there is a difference between the jets, it's not massive. Anything like that. You know, you probably could complete the game in absolutely any jet. Come on, baby. Let's get you padlocked. Alright. Try and get that reticle over the enemy, which is way harder than you think. Not happening. No, he's gone. Oh, you little sausage. Ah, he's playing hard to get. You little squirrely bastard. Now, he's not a main target, so technically, we don't have to kill him. But we will. We'll put him out of his misery. He's coming straight for me. Ooh, shredded his ass. Excellent. As you can see, my wingman is just flying around in circles, not really doing anything. That's not an emulation thing either, by the way. Your wingman is just genuinely useless. I think the only point of the wingman is maybe to draw some fire? Maybe? Now, another interesting point with this game is that for some reason, no, that's not going to work. For some reason, ground targets are worth significantly more than aerial kills. Don't know why. I mean, the best practice is to try and kill everything you can anyway. But they're worth so many more points. Also, also worth noting that oh, that F4 is coming in heavy. Nope, he's breaking. That was unintelligent of you. Uh, ground targets only take one missile. Only ever take one missile. Not sure why. But it's fine. Yeah, so every time you take even a slightest graze, you'll have that alert body damage, alert body damage, alert body damage, alert body damage, repeat. And the computer says it four times, I believe. Kind of annoying, but you know, it's atmospheric, yo. You really need to break as soon as you lose a missile on these ground targets. Otherwise, you're going to fuck around and find out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, look at that. Did you see my wingman actually fired a missile at this guy and hit him? I mean, I don't I don't think it did anything, but uh, it looked cool, I guess. Get out of here, you stinking bum. Right, who's next? Go for the money shot. Oh, yeah. We're going to hit again. Let's take these ground targets out. Fire and break. Now, the good thing about the A-10 is it is almost, almost invincible. Whereas uh, things like the F-18 uh, are extremely fragile. Missile approaching. There's no missile approaching. 
If there was, my screen would be flashing red. Come on, sweet cheeks. Oh, it's an F-15. <laughs> that thing should be eating us for breakfast. He's done. He's down and out. You're mine. Kiss your asshole. Goodbye. Ooh, God. Almost kissed him. Went in for a bit of tongue. Oh, God. Break. We're shooting. We're shooting. We're shooting. We're not hitting. Come on. There we go. Oh, he's done. I believe in later games as well. It's just the two main targets left. You get more money for gun kills. I might be wrong with that. But I'm pretty sure I'm not. Alright. One last tower block to waste. Which apparently has no civilians in. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're mercenaries, so we don't care about that sort of stuff. Ha ha ha, that music, that bass. It's so good. Look how much more money we got for the ground targets. It's kind of ridiculous. And that, guys, is Air Combat. And I'm going to leave it there. So, I hope you enjoyed this Titan Tries. I'm going to try and do these more often. If I can do one a week, we will. Don't necessarily count on it, but I'm going to do my best. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.